Navigating sleep and travel with young children. Today I'm going to give you four things to, to think about when it comes to taking that trip, going on that holiday or vacation with your little ones and how to avoid that throwing everything off when it comes to their sleep. So the first thing I want to give you is the travel day. There's going to be a travel day, whether it's just a few hours or you know, 12 hours or more that you're traveling, there's a day where travel is involved. And often when we travel, the motion puts our little ones to sleep or even us to sleep. Um, and the journey itself is going to just throw things off. So you're likely to see sleep happen when it wouldn't normally happen or not happen when it would normally happen. Eating might be on a slightly different schedule. Everything's just a little off on a travel day. And that's okay because you can use that travel day to your advantage. You might be shifting in terms of time zone, you might not be, but when you get to your destination, you can get things on track. The travel day kind of gives you that freedom and it also can help accommodate. So for instance, if it's going to mean your, your little one's gonna be awake later than usual, you know, bedtime isn't gonna happen in the usual way, then maybe it's okay because they actually, they got a bit of sleep earlier in the day. So the first thing to think about is the travel day. Don't stress over that day. Don't worry about trying to keep a little one awake. If they're tired, let them sleep. We can catch everything up when we get there. The second one is switch to local time right away. Now, it may be that there is no time zone change. Maybe you're not going very far and that's slightly different. But generally speaking, when we're doing a big trip, the ones that make us more nervous about sleep and changes, there usually is a time change involved. So the best tip is switch to local time straight away. Don't try and stay on your home time zone. It, they, they aren't fooled by that. You know, just simple things like the sun rising and the sun setting and the time they eat their meals, all those things are going to tell them what time it really is. So there's no sense in trying to trick them. And usually you haven't got time to make kind of a gradual move into this. That travel day is gonna have been a good chance to almost let things just go completely awry so that when you do get there, you bang on to local time. And that means, you know, having breakfast at breakfast time and lunch at lunch time and the evening meal and the bedtime all start to slot into place. You create those rhythms, the light of day, the activity of the day, all those things will help to tell your child what time it is and therefore make bedtime a whole lot easier. So get onto local time straight away and the same when you return home as well. Switch straight back to local time. Yes, there may be some jet lag. Yes, there may be some challenges with that, with your child perhaps falling asleep when, you know, or, you know really tired before they should be or um, the other way around. It, it can, yes, that can happen. Um, of course, and usually within you know, three or four nights or even just up to a week, they'll get back into their usual time zone and rhythm. So that may happen, but for, your, for you, your role is to work on local time. Don't try and pretend it's a different time. The third thing I'm gonna give you, wherever you go when you're traveling with little ones to help them sleep soundly, is to create a familiar sleep environment. So, what could that be? It could be just something familiar from home, like a cuddly or a you know, lovely cuddly toy. It could be that you take a pillowcase from home so that it has that same smell, um, or sheets or something like that. That can help for some little ones that are very sensitive. Uh, the environment, you know, if they're used to a very dark room, make it as dark as you can. Uh, lots of people travel with the travel stick-on blackout blinds so that you've got that coverage. I know people that swear by those. They're very big, you can stick them up at windows. So if the place you're staying doesn't have the blackout facility that you have at home, you can try and recreate that. If your child usually sleeps in their own room, but they're gonna be in your room on holiday, then you can do things like move the furniture around, try and just create a secluded space that's theirs. It might not be a separate room, but if you can screen off an area that's theirs as best you can, you know, get creative. You'd be amazed at what you can do if you try. Maybe it's even just having a few chairs that creates almost like a little wall. Gosh, you could, you could take two standard chairs put a blanket over them and there you've got a wall between their bed and the rest of the room. So there's lots of things you can do. People pin up sheets, <laughs> all kinds of things, just to try and create a slight separation and a little bit of their space. And they love it, it feels a little bit like a den. 
<laughs> um, so a familiar environment in as many ways as you can. And the same goes for bedtime. If at bedtime they usually sit with you and have a story in their bedroom, do that. Even if that then means transferring them to the pushchair and going out for the evening and they sleep in a pushchair while you have your evening meal. That's okay. That's allowed. Holiday rules. But the fact that you did the bedtime routine and process in the, in the accommodation, in the way you normally do, is gonna help your child to recognize that, oh, okay, I get this, this is sleep time now, and, and settle down. So lots of little tricks and variations you can do on holiday, but having some of those familiarities from home to help them feel at ease and know what to do. And the fourth one I wanna give you is a really helpful tip for the travel itself, and that is have age-appropriate journey entertainment. <laughs> so what could that be? I say age appropriate because for a toddler it's going to possibly be little you know um, pocket money type toys and for a seven-year-old it's going to probably be more like an iPod. <laughs> so it's going to need to be an age appropriate thing but maybe try and save something special, something they don't have every day I know with the littlies, it's especially great if you can get a few of those knick-knack toys from the shop, put them in a special little holiday bag, and they've never seen them before. And if you're on a plane journey, you pull them out on the plane and go, oh, or even just, you know, one at a time. And they're like, oh, because you know how little ones are when it's something new, a new toy they haven't seen before. The same can apply to favorite toys. If there's a favorite thing that you know they're just engaged in for ages that will keep them busy, those kinds of things are great, but something new and different are certainly going to buy you some time while they explore that new thing. Uh, so that's a really good one. It's very challenging with little ones when they are just learning to walk or have just learnt to walk, being on a plane especially when they have to be seated at times and all they want to do is practice walking. It's one of the most challenging times to do an aeroplane journey is around that just learning to walk time they are gonna need some real captivating entertainment. And a little bit of screen time won't hurt on a journey if it means that everybody gets to sit and be safe and be calm and pass a little bit of that time away, and then that might be a helpful one too. So there you go, four tips to making the travel and holiday time and getting away with the family a little easier without throwing off the whole sleep routine. If you enjoyed this episode and it was helpful, then please do like us, subscribe to the channel so you're notified when we release new episodes. And don't forget to grab your download. You'll find there's a link and you can get the free download that will also help you further with this exact topic.